robots are taking over. By robots, I mean AI, and by taking over, I mean helping us cook. Because today, a machine learning program is helping us make pizza. Now, to do this, we're using a program called ChatGPT. It's basically a website that you can ask pretty much anything, and it'll give you an answer. I use it to write emails that I'm just too lazy to write myself, but you can also use it to, like, cheat on homework or even asking pickup lines to use on a dating app. That's right, robots Love can you. riz you up. But today we're using AI to help us cook. So I'm gonna just go ahead and ask, hi, can you give me a pizza recipe? And there it is, a pretty simple pizza recipe. But I am not looking for something simple, I'm looking for something interesting. And you know what's interesting to me? Korean cooking. Korea was the first country I ever visited outside of my own, and I fell in love with the food there, and it's kind of what got me into cooking. So I'm gonna ask ChatGPT if they can make this pizza with a Korean twist. All right, and there we go. Right off the bat, it says to replace the tomato sauce with gochujang. Sounds like a good idea. And then it gives a list of Korean toppings like bulgogi, bean sprouts, and sesame seeds. So before we make the pizza, we gotta go and get the ingredients. So let's go ahead and get our booty to the grocery store. All right, I'm back. I forgot to record my shopping journey. So here is just some random B-roll footage of people shopping and you can just pretend that it's me. So the first thing that AI wants us to do is to make the dough. And to do that, it says we need some flour, some yeast, some sugar, olive oil. Olive oil in the pan. We'll start off with olive oil. And some salt. So let's go ahead and get started. So first up, it says to dissolve the sugar in some warm water and then add yeast. So let's just go ahead and do that. Here is our sugar. We're gonna go ahead and mix that up and make sure that the sugar is all dissolved. And then the AI says to add some active dry yeast. I don't know why, but yeast has always scared me. It looks so weird. Oh, and it smells like popcorn for some reason. All right, and then we just let that sit for around 10 minutes. We'll push that over to the side. And then in a large bowl, we're going to put in three and a half cups of flour. Give that a little mix and then add two tablespoons of olive oil. Then we mix everything together once again. And I think I see a hair in here. So let's ask AI to see if we should take it out. All right, let's keep it in. All right, so after a few minutes, this yeast mixture became foamy at the top. So we're gonna add that into the flour and then mix it together until a dough forms. So as you can tell, a whisk might not be the best tool for this. So let's see what AI thinks I should use instead. All right, let's use our hands. The yeast feels so weird and smells funky. The dough does not seem to be sticking very well. So I'm gonna ask AI what I should do. All right, so Robot said to add some water and I think it helped. All right, I've been trying to form this dough for a while now and I feel like this is doughy enough. It's like a ball of dough, I don't know. But the next thing Robot says for us to do is to knead the dough on a floured surface. So I guess we'll do just that. So here I am flouring my surface. Then we commence kneading. I'm doing this based off of how I've seen cats knead. You know, if there's like a pillow nearby, they'll just like put their paws in it like this. But I guess it would help to ask Robot what kneading actually is. All right, so I was correct. Thank you, Robot. All right, so our dough ball is formed, and now Robot says for us to put it in a greasy bowl and let it rise for an hour. Robot says it should be smooth and elastic, E, and I feel like that is pretty smooth and elastic. And now we're just gonna let that sit in the corner until it's done. All right, so now that the dough is rising, you can see it over here, we're gonna start marinating the bulgogi. For some reason, I could not find any beef at the grocery store, so we're gonna be using chicken for the bulgogi today. Other than that though, we're following Robot's recipe to the T. So to make this, I have chicken, soy sauce, sugar, medium or cooking wine, sesame oil, garlic, and some green onions. So first up, we're gonna chop all the ingredients that we need to chop. All right, so next up, Robot says to make the marinade. So to do that, we're gonna put this chicken into a bowl along with some soy sauce, two tablespoons of sugar, two tablespoons of meeting, one tablespoon of sesame oil. It's a very fragrant oil that smells nutty and delicious. <sighs> That's the stuff. Next up, we add our garlic. And then lastly, Robot tells me to put some pepper, but it looks like I just ran out, so I'm gonna be using paprika instead. I'm doing this solely because paprika and pepper sound a little bit similar. And then finally, we mix this all together and let it sit overnight. Now, doesn't that look delicious? 
I'm letting the meat marinate in the fridge. And we still have the dough, so let's go check on that. Ooh, look at that. It got nice and thick, didn't it? And dough is not easy to make, so I would say so far, so good. So I'm gonna put this in a little plastic bag into the fridge as well, and then we're gonna continue the robot pizza tomorrow. Hello, I'm back. The pizza dough has been in the fridge for around 16 hours, so let's go ahead and check on that. I'm not sure what I'm looking for, but it does look like a pizza dough. And as far as the chicken, well, it definitely looks like chicken. And before we start baking the pizza like Robot says, I'm gonna go ahead and cook our bulgogi chicken. All right, so the bulgogi chicken is done, so it's time to have a little taste. Hmm, interesting. Let's have another piece. I mean, it is good, but it doesn't taste like bulgogi at all. Definitely has more of a teriyaki vibe. Like I said though, it is good, so I will give credit to Robot for that. Now let's make the pizza. Pizza time. Our chicken is ready, our oven is warm, and the last thing to do, finally, is to bake the pizza. So here we have our pizza dough, and the robot says to have a floured surface. So here is my surface, and I need to flour it now. So I'm gonna take some of this dough and roll it into a large circle on a floured surface. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm not sure what the best method to do this is, so I'm kind of just folding it out into a disc like this. Seems to be working. I think it is ready. It's not totally round or circular, but you know, it's good enough. So let's start adding our toppings. So Robot said we could basically just replace the tomato sauce base of the pizza with gochujang. If you don't know what gochujang is, it's a hot pepper paste that's used in a lot of Korean cooking. I like it a lot. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on the pizza with some mozzarella cheese, kimchi, bean sprouts, and our bulgogi chicken. All right, so right off the bat, the gochujang is, does not spread as well as tomato sauce because it's not as watery, but it should be fine. Next up is our cheese. And I almost forgot, but Robot told us to put the pizza pizza onto a pan before we add our toppings. So I'll do just that. All right, so now we add the cheese. Next up, we add our kimchi. It's not the best kimchi, but it's still pretty good. And next up is our bulgogi chicken or pseudo teriyaki chicken. Definitely does not taste like bulgogi to me. Robot also told me to add some bean sprouts. And finally, I'm gonna top it off with some more cheese. And there it is, our Korean robot pizza. All that's left now is to put it in the oven and hope for the best. Robot says to bake it at four. I have no idea what that was, but I'll choose to ignore it. But Robot said to bake it at 425 for 20 minutes, so now we just wait. And I guess we should wash some dishes. All right, here it is, our finished Korean robot pizza. So I guess the last thing to do is add some sesame seeds and dig in. <laughs> I put way too much flour on the pan. It straight up tastes dusty, but I think I can brush it off. There we go. Now the dough definitely looks a bit pale, but it is fully cooked and actually quite good. And as far as the flavor of the pizza itself, it is really good. The gochujang adds a nice spicy flavor and the kimchi adds that iconic Korean flavor. I could definitely do without the bean sprouts, but the chicken is fine. Would definitely be better if it were beef. But overall, I would have to say that this was a complete success. I'm pretty surprised that a robot could come up with such a valid recipe. And it makes me curious to see how it can help me in my future of learning to cook. Make sure to like and subscribe, but until next time, ciao.